Hi, Water Street Church. My name is Roberta. In today's message, I'm completing a conversation where I have already introduced the themes of special and general revelation. I've tied this to my personal testimony of growth regarding roles and structures in my life that I see mirror the God created structure of our world. And today I'm going to bring forward how I see all of this functions within the life, the body of a community, in our case, a congregational life. My reflections are based on two scripture passages. First is taken from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verses 17 through 20. The second is from 2 Corinthians verse 5, chapter 5, in which the themes of the new body, the reflection of how Christ's resurrection brings new life into our sinful nature, it then restores and reconciles us to allow us to become the righteousness of God. So professionally, I spend all of my work days steeped in rules, regulations, policy, process, procedure. Specifically, I work in the gray area between the letter of the law and the intent of the law. Specifically, how this interaction happens in a workplace, which is from a sociology slash psychology perspective, a community. In communities, we have accepted in a, as a culture that structures like the ones I've just mentioned are necessary in order for us to function together. Without them, nothing gets done. So much of our work revolves around the creation of, the maintenance of, and the apl application of workplace rules, our duties, recording, assessments, compliances, and so on. To slightly switch gears, pun intended, there is another example of rules and structures that we all hold very dear. And I'm talking about those that come from our Ministry of Transportation. This is an area where all of us are experts in the difference between the purpose and the letter of the law and our creative interpretation and the intent of the law. Most of us will passionately defend our interpretation and have spent years building up credible defense of our positions. So returning to my job, the reason I have a job is because as much as rules were created for a purpose, they are almost always in response to a specific situation. As people who are not able to think of every exception and every nuance, it becomes necessary to revise, adapt, and make exception for, to adjust the rules and structures that were created. Bringing in the biblical perspective, I believe it's because everything we do has been affected by sin. It makes it impossible for us to achieve perfection. Conflict, tension, frustration with rules and structure are the effects of sin on God's creation. Diving deeper into the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus says, and I'm reading here, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the stro least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. This passage, specifically verse 19, which talks about not setting aside any of the letter of the law, has been used to defend an approach of, of Christianity that requires extreme precision and the upholding of every commandment of the Bible. At the same time, that paragraph ends up pointing out that unless we keep the laws to perfection better than that of the Pharisees, who were notorious for their legalistic reading of scripture, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So in reading scripture, we are encouraged to study it as a whole. This is called hermeneutics, which is the branch of knowledge that deals with the interpretation of literary texts, and in this case, specifically the Bible. So if we look then at 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 through 21, we read this. For so, so, for now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we were once regard, we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, and the new is here. All is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was not reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as through God, 
as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Like the first passage, this has much for us to hear, and in our context provides a response as to how we can get to heaven, despite our inability to live fully up to the standard of the law. This is core to the hope that we have in resurrection. So bringing this then back to our congregational life, it is my thought that we have rules, structures, habits, traditions, and expectations that are of great importance to how we function as a body. I say this because of words like, but that's the way we've always done it, which is something that I hear in my work life. Legally, this is actually called something, it's something called a precedence. Perhaps the written rules don't actually say what happens. So legally, there's legal acknowledgement that precedence can actually override the written rule or structure. At the same time, there is also legal allowance that the rule was written for a good reason. And despite past precedence, there can be a reason to return to the written rule. There are proper steps that need to happen. Notice so that people have time to prepare for change, a commitment of resources to achieve adherence. And even with notice, it's actually possible where practicality overrides that past precedence can override the desire to return to the written language of the rules. It's just structurally not possible. So there is also opportunity to review, revise, and adjust rules. And this is done in response to the fact that times change, responsibilities and resources change, and ability to comply changes. I'm going to give you one brief anecdote from work. I have in the past represented a worker who had what is called a full sleeve tattoo. The workplace had a policy that basically stated that the tattoo was permissible if the tattoo was in a non-visible area and was less than three square inches. If the tattoo was larger than three square inches, it was in violation of the policy and could lead to discipline. So with the full sleeve tattoo, my worker was in clear violation of the policy and head office, who was aware that the employee actually had worked at that location for over five years, was intent on disciplining the worker. In defense of the worker, it was clear that this rule was something we call arbitrary. True, when the policy was written over a decade earlier, general culture supported a policy like this. But in the city where the workplace was located, the primary employers were hard industry, and there were multiple residents in that facility that actually had more tattoos than my worker. Also, talking about arbitrary, what is it that made a tattoo of three square inches or less acceptable, but one that was three and a quarter inches square not acceptable? And when we talk about the three square inches, is it the overall surface area? Because most tattoos are not square. So what if you measure greater than three inches in one direction? End result, the policy ended up being discarded and the worker was not disciplined. Coming back to our church then, here are my concluding thoughts. We are created with a longing for rules and structure. Our creator God who fashioned us in his image draws us to a love for and to see the beauty of structure. At the same time, we are imperfect and sinful. This means that the structure that we create is not perfect. So much so that if we try to follow the rules and structures laid out in scripture, which should be close to perfection or are perfect, there is no hope of us entering heaven. Yet this is not our hope and this is not our path to salvation. We don't depend on salvation through rules. We instead rely on our salvation through the resurrection. In response, we are called to the work of reconciliation. We will, as in the example of rules, do it wrongly, we'll do it sinfully, and we're going to mess this up. We're going to do that, but we don't have to see it as hopelessness. Because we have been given grace and the call to keep trying, to keep doing, to keep extending the attitude of reconciliation. So I'm going to leave these thoughts with you here. I trust that you will take time to turn to the scriptures, test them out, both from your own perspective, but also in the context and study of our shared theology. Bye for now.